Welcome to your astrological forecast for the week of Monday, March 14th through Sunday, March 20th. This week I'm using a different website just because um, the normal website I use, planetwatcher.com, has been down this week. And um, I guess it's going through some changes. So um, let me know if you even watch these videos. You know, I know you can just use this as a podcast and just listen to it. Um, and that's fine too, whatever works for you. But I don't know if it matters to you if I use a different website or um, or what you'd prefer. But for the meantime, I'll use um, this site, which is horoscopes.astro-seek.com. Um, it allows me to do pretty much the same thing. It just is a different layout. Um, and we'll see. I guess planetwatcher.com is supposed to reboot in the future. But anyway... This week we have a full moon in Virgo at 27 degrees Virgo. It's interesting because it's at the very end of Virgo. And so pretty much right after the full moon, the moon will leave Virgo and enter Libra. And so we'll get a break from that intensity. Um, but yeah, moon in Virgo is bringing up a lot of themes of you know, out with the old, in with the new, making room for um, the new. And that leads me to a major theme I've I'm seeing this week, which is really... Catharsis. I think I might call this video catharsis or something related to that because it's really about clearing out the old to make way for the new. That's what Pisces and Virgo are all, all about. Um, and, you know, with all these Pisces energies combining with the Virgo full moon, it's really about the Pisces Virgo axis this week, um, which has to do with integration, reflection, and making peace with our past in order to move on to the next level um, in the near future to move on to this whole new stage here. Um, that's really what a lot of it is about. And speaking of which, Sun will actually enter Aries late this week on Sunday. So we are approaching the spring equinox in the Northern Hemisphere. Most of my viewers are in the Northern Hemisphere. I'm in the Northern Hemisphere. Western astrology was developed in the Northern Hemisphere, so I'll continue to, um, to come from that viewpoint here, but this is a very powerful time, maybe the most powerful time in the Northern Hemisphere because the sun is about to enter areas where it's exalted and we experience so much initiation, so much new vitality and life um, at the beginning of spring. Um, so yeah, we're, we're about to leave from this dreamy period where we don't know what's happening and we're in a fog. We're about to leave the fog and enter kind of a whole new world, especially once Mercury enters Aries and joins the sun um, later. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Um, but this week we're sort of approaching the end of this fog that I've been talking about. Let's get into the forecast here. So Monday, March 14th, we have the moon in Leo. And this sort of, it's opposing Mars, Venus, and uh, well, right now it's opposing mostly Mars and Venus in Leo on Monday. Um, and it's also making a quincunx, which is kind of an odd aspect. It's almost, you know, one sign over from opposing these Pisces planets of Mercury, Jupiter, and then later Neptune and the Sun. Um, so Moon and Leo is kind of a weird fit. It doesn't really fit in with all these other planets in Pisces and Aquarius. Um, Moon and Leo is wanting to bring transparency and openness, some fire, some warmth to the mix. And now Pisces is a warm sign. You know, it is the end of winter in the Northern Hemisphere, but it is, it's the end of winter. It, it alludes to spring. It, um, it creates the environment necessary to bring spring, to bring Aries. Um, so it is a warm energy. Pisces is a warm energy. So, so I think combining Leo moon with Pisces sun and with all these other Pisces planets, on the one hand, you know, these are all, <laughs> this. it's hard to not to get sidetracked for this week because these are nuanced energies. They're complex and multifaceted energies. Uh, Pisces in particular is very dynamic. There's a lot going on. Pisces is a combination of all the other signs. There's also a level of duality there. Pisces is two fish. The symbol of Pisces is, is two fish. So you'll hear me kind of go back and forth a lot for this forecast. On the one hand, on Monday, going into Tuesday, because the moon will still be in Leo. Um, Monday, on the one hand, moon and Leo combined with Pisces Sun, and then Venus and Mars and Aquarius. These energies to me look very candid, so we're being sincere with one another, being open, honest, transparent. Um, 
wanting that understanding. We're wanting, we're desiring social cohesion. We're desiring to build a new world with one another, to work together. It's almost kind of utopian. We're having these kind of lofty, idealistic desires right now. Um, and we're very set in our beliefs, which leads me to the other side of this, which is we are maybe more opinionated at the start of this week, very set in our beliefs, and we're unwilling to compromise. So on the one hand, we want to work together and create this new world, this new vision, but we're wanting to do so in our own way and we're not willing to compromise. And so there's this lack of social cohesion. So I think on Monday, we're wanting something that's not really possible or we're wanting something that we're not able or willing to actually create with one another, um, if that makes sense. You know, Leo, Pisces, Aquarius, these are all idealistic energies and they're all wanting social cohesion, but they're wanting to do it in their own way. They don't want to compromise. So, um, so it's a mixed bag. There can be that sincerity, that honesty, um, but also a, a lack of, of compromise. That's pretty much what I see for Monday, honestly. I know that's maybe not the best, but it's, it is it um, is chaotic. It's Because like I said, I mean, we're in this thick fog. We can't see ahead. We're confused, but we're also going full speed ahead. And Moon and Leo is wanting that um, intensity, that impulsiveness. It's wanting us to be, um, to kind of act first, shoot first, ask questions later, pretty much. So... On the one hand, we're idealistic. We're wanting to get along with one another, but we seem unable or unwilling to do so. Going forward to Tuesday, March 15th, Moon is still in Leo, so it's a lot of the same energies. There's increasing intensity, though, because the Moon is gaining light, and it's almost in Virgo where it will eventually be full. Um, so Moon is gaining light, increased intensity, especially emotionally. There's more emotions, more... Um, uh, more intensity there, and especially because this full moon that will happen later this week is in Virgo, which is a yin sign, so it will be more easygoing, reflective, internal. Um, at the start of this week on Tuesday here, moon is in Leo, which is much more outgoing, dramatic, fiery, flashy. Um, so even though the full the moon is not full yet, it's in this very kind of dramatic, outgoing sign. So So there can be clashes, I think. There can be acts of generosity, of compassion, of humanitarian, um, you know, helping fellow man, fellow woman, um, helping one another, helping the less fortunate. Those are a lot of the themes of Leo, Aquarius, and Pisces. But on the, on the other hand, combining Leo, Aquarius, and Pisces can also be tyrannical. It can be, um, I think there's a recklessness when you are so idealistic and you're desiring a lot of themes and ideas that are very theoretical, and putting those into place, there's no telling what will actually happen from those until they are set into motion. Um, that's a lot of the themes of Aquarius, but also combining with Pisces and Leo. Um, I think there's a recklessness here. We're kind of ungrounded. There's not a lot of Earth energy right now. So, um, so yeah, and this applies not only as a world level. So I think on a world stage, we can be a little bit... Um, reckless right now, a little bit idealistic, but also in our personal lives, we may initiate things which we, we may think they have a certain way that they, what impacts our lives, but what actually will occur is sort of unknown until it happens. And this comes back to the Pisces energies as well, specifically Mercury and Pisces. It's easy to make miscalculations right now. It's easy to make mis, uh, you know, misjudgments, um, just because there is that fog that we're in that we we can't see what's happening. Um, so I would say to apply caution, be extra thorough. I would not say this would be a good time to be impulsive or reckless because, like I said, we can't see what's happening. So, um, so on the one hand, you have to be cautious and double check your thinking. And on the other hand, you have to also just kind of embrace the unknown right now because that, at the end of the day, you're not going to be able to know exactly what's happening or understand right now. I think a lot of what's happening right now, we are meant to understand later. About a month from now, things will become much more clear. 
right now we're not necessarily meant to understand everything that's happening. Let's go forward to Wednesday, March 16th. Um, we finally have the moon entering Virgo. Now it won't actually be full in Virgo until Friday, but even on Wednesday as the moon enters Virgo, we start to experience that increased activity, restlessness, intensity, um, that is, you know, leading up to the full moon. It's building up to the full moon. And moon has already entered Virgo, so we start to really experience the themes of the Pisces-Virgo axis. Um, integration. You know, I've talked about in the past, Virgo ends the first half of the zodiac, and Pisces ends the entire cycle of the zodiac. So um, Pisces in particular is, is ending the whole cycle. It's reflecting and, and integrating the entire cycle, and that act of integration and reflection itself is integral to the manifestation, the creation of the next cycle. And I think I'd almost like to just pause and reflect on that for a moment because it's a really big theme. It's one that Virgo explores as well to a lesser extent because Virgo, you know, like I said, Virgo has half the job of Pisces. Virgo is in charge of integrating the first half of the zodiac to make way for the next half. But both of them are doing the same thing in a different way. Both of them are pausing, reflecting, and both, in a more mundane sense, both correlate to our health, our physical health, our mental and emotional health, and then the connection between the two. Um, you know, a lot of physical health is more ruled by Virgo, and then mental health is more, more ruled by Pisces, but there is a mix between the two. You cannot completely separate them. Environmental toxins and radiation um, would be more Pisces, and, and Virgo also has to do with mental health. You know, there, there's really, there's really no, there's no separating the two. And I think it's, an, this is a, an opportunity to take an important look at our health and our environment. It's really about what we consume. What do we consume physically? What do we eat? Uh, what do we consume, you know, through our environments, through osmosis? We're, we're pretty, we're mostly made of water. And I think that's really important to think about mentally, physically, emotionally, we're constantly absorbing our surroundings. Um, so what people are you around? What energies are you around? Are there toxins in your environment? And again, that I'm talking about physical toxins in your food, water, in your environment, physical or um, also non-physical toxins, metaphorical toxins in the people you're associating with, uh, the activities you're choosing to participate in. Um, and, and toxins come to us in things that we desire that um, a lot of the things we enjoy or that we've learned to enjoy are toxic. Um, our cell phones, our, our, our electronics <laughs> poison us through radiation. The foods we eat poison us through you know, GMOs and um, chemicals in our food and our water. Um, what else here? You know, sweets or you know, foods that are unhealthy for us. Uh, drugs that we consume, alcohol, caffeine, uh, rec stronger recreational drugs. W we wittingly or unwittingly consume so much toxin, so much poison, so much radiation. And again, a lot of that is, you know, um, meta metaphorical as well. So um, I think it's just a, a great time to take a second look at that. Being, uh, making unwise well, I shouldn't. I don't want to apply judgment. Um, choosing, choosing unwittingly or wittingly to expose ourselves to toxins during a transit like this would be extra damaging to our health. Um, so, in other words, there's a propensity right now to spiral into conditions of poor health, physically and mentally or otherwise, um, if we you know, depending on our choices and what we are um, surrounding ourselves with. I think we can be extra sensitive to mental burnout right now, especially with Mercury and detriment and fall in Pisces. Um, so it's really important to pause, reflect. And that leads me to the, the most um, auspicious version of this transit, Moon and Virgo, where it will be full. Um, the most auspicious version would be pausing, reflecting, integrating. Um, it's not necessarily a time to be, you know, partying, to be really active. It's a time. 
it, it, it's it's contradictory because the full moon is a time of activity. It's a culmination, but it's in Virgo, which is about organizing and um, you know getting rid of the old, making room for new. So it's a time of increased activity, but the activity is centered around rest, if that makes sense. The activity is centered around um, you know preparing ourselves for for a new day, for a new cycle. Um, so those are the themes we can kind of think about as the moon enters Virgo. Going forward to Thursday, March 17th, uh, moon continues through Virgo. It's still not full yet. It will be full on Friday, um, but moon is you know continuing to build light, build intensity. Um, oh, something I wanted to touch on is that, yes, there is that potential for declining health if we are um, subjecting ourselves to toxins, radiation, you know, etc. Um, but on the other hand, if we do take the time to pause, reflect, integrate, the benefits are also stronger. So, you know, stronger hazards of not being savvy to these toxins and such, not integrating, uh, mental burnout, etc. But also increased benefits to leading a good life, um, increased benefits to pausing, integrating, reflecting, allow our, uh, allowing ourselves to rest if we can. Um, Virgo likes to be organized. It likes things to be put together. To be totally honest, though, I don't think this is a great day for, you know, cleaning the house and, like, getting everything physically organized like we might picture with Virgo. Um, there's a lot of Pisces, you know, the energy continues to be really dominated by the, Pisces, the sign of Pisces. Um, and combining with Virgo, the focus is still, some of it, much of it is about our health or our, our mind, our emotions. I think it's mostly about integration. Um, and Virgo teaches us that sometimes mental, emotional, spiritual integ integration can occur through mundane physical chores, like doing the dishes or the laundry um, and I think we all have maybe favorite or least favorite chores like that. Um, if there's something that is somewhat pleasant to you, something that you can kind of relax doing, like gardening or cooking, um, or it could even be, it doesn't have to be a chore, it could be like a physical activity like running or jogging, drawing, reading, writing, anything like that where you can kind of calm the mind, but in a way that's sort of, you know, physically productive, I guess. Uh, that will really tick all the boxes and satisfy both the moon and Virgo as well as all these planets in Pisces. Um, because, and that's why it's because they're, these activities are great for integration, for um, reflecting and for allowing your mind to wander. Um, that's what's absolutely necessary for building intuition and for creating the space that will lead to the next world that is brought on by the ingress of the sun into Aries at the spring equinox. Um, okay, <laughs> let's see. Thursday, we also have Mercury making a sextile to Uranus. Mercury um, here at 12 degrees Pisces, sextiling Uranus at 12 degrees Taurus. And this is a really interesting aspect because it's interesting for multiple reasons. One reason is because both Mercury combining, Mercury and Uranus both have to do with gaining information, shifting perspectives, you know, increasing consciousness, learning. Um, and something I wanted to touch on is that with Uranus, Uranus does not have to do, it does have to do with shifts and breakthroughs, but these breakthroughs, the, o the only new thing that happens with a, Uran a, a Uranian breakthrough is the shift in consciousness itself. It's, it typically doesn't originate with something physical. So I'll give you an example. When Uranus was discovered, nothing changed with Uranus. Uranus didn't change. It's not like a new planet was added to our solar system. It was there the whole time. It was our awareness of it that changed. And what's really interesting is that Uranus is actually sometimes visible with the naked eye. Even you know ancient Greek people saw Uranus. They just didn't think it was a planet. They thought it was a... A, a star, a fixed star, because it was so slow and it wasn't very visible. Um, so the point I'm trying to make is that Uranian discoveries and changes, they don't resonate with the fire element. 
if they did, it would be, you know, completely new things happening, new, sh new changes. They, <laughs> there's not physical new changes happening with this discoveries of Uranus. It's, it's just changes in the mind and the perception and the perspective. Um, so just like when we just discovered Uranus, when it was there the whole time, that, that's how this transit is experienced, if that makes sense. So, so as Mercury connects to Uranus, we can have shifts, breakthroughs in consciousness, but the fascinating thing is it's not actually our lives that are necessarily changing. It's just our awareness that changes. And from that awareness, then comes the change. Because once you access increased awareness, consciousness, a different perspective, that's where you decide whether you make the change or not and how to adapt to this new realization. You know, and that's what's so unpredictable about Uranus, especially looking at it. Um, you know, if someone's experiencing some Aquarian energy, they may seem totally unpredictable. The reason why they're unpredictable is because they're not reacting to any physical change. So that's what I'm trying to illustrate. Uh, they're reacting to a change that's occurred inside their own mind. Um, and I don't want to downplay that because when you change your awareness, it's almost akin to changing the reality itself. Um, when you change your perception, even if everything is physically the same, when you change your awareness, it changes your, it changes your entire experiences. It changes the game. Um, perception is really everything in a way. It's powerful. So, um, so there's a lot of potential for increasing awareness, which can be uncomfortable. It's especially uncomfortable, and this is another reason why this aspect is interesting, is because Uranus is in fall in Taurus. It's exalted in Scorpio, which is opposite. It's in fall in Taurus. Mercury is in fall in Pisces. It's exalted in Virgo, which is opposite in fall in Pisces. So both these planets are exiled. They're estranged. They're in challenging circumstances. Um, they're experiencing unusual, unexpected events, themes, um, etc. So, so both these energies are making us feel exiled, alone, um, outcasted, out of our element. But as I've touched on before, it's necessary. It's necessary to feel outcasted, exiled, alone in order to experience awareness outside of the collective, outside of the status quo, outside of the norm. So, so in short, Mercury in Pisces, Sextile, Uranus, and Taurus is an opportunity to experience increases in awareness, which may be challenging or, or uncomfortable, but which allow us to gain more control, responsibility over our own lives and to move on to another level, to gain insight. Okay, let's go forward to Friday, March 18th. Okay, there's a lot happening on Friday. Um, I'll start out with, th we have two aspects, then the full moon, and then the moon enters Libra immediate, almost immediately after the full moon. I'll talk about these in that order. So first, um, sun at 28 degrees Pisces, sextiles Pluto at 28 degrees Capricorn. This is a bit, to me it's a bittersweet aspect. It's um, a mixed bag here. The first thing I think of when I see this aspect is that it can be a potential trigger for the recent United States Pluto return that happened on February 20th. Um, sometimes major events do not happen right on the date of a aspect like that, especially a very slow long-term aspect like that. Sometimes they can be triggered by a secondary or a precursor aspect. So in this case, Sun sextile Pluto um, I think does have the potential to be a trigger for a major event. Um, I'm not making any specific predictions. It's really hard to do that with astrology, at least with, with my awareness of astrology. Um, but I do see that as a potential trigger for some kind of major event or activity, especially with the United States government or society. And this is a sextile. Sextiles are generally harmonious. However, this is Pluto we're talking about. Pluto, <laughs> the silver lining or, the, you know, the most harmonious side of Pluto really just involves the destruction of what is not good. Good meaning what is not efficient, what is not truthful, what is not valuable, what is not ethical. 
uh, that's as positive as Pluto gets. It's still involving destruction. And even if you're destroying something that is no longer working, something that is inefficient or, or untrue, it's, it can still be very challenging. You know, y that removal, um, it requires change. It requires ad adaptation. Um, and it leaves a void. It leaves a vacancy that must be replaced by something else. So that change in itself can be traumatic, even if you're leaving a situation that's abusive or, or challenging, like we've experienced with our society and with our um, government. Even leaving that can be difficult as well. So these are the things that are brought up here. On a more personal level, um, between the Mercury sextiling Uranus aspect of the day before and the now Sun sextiling Pluto, I think both of these aspects, especially Sun sextile Pluto, can be pivotal, piv pivotal for increasing spiritual and psychic awareness. Um, and I want to highlight something that you know Pluto is a very you know it's it, it's ruled by it rules Scorpio, which is very perceptive, very intuitive, um, but it can also be very paranoid, pessimistic, cynical. So I wanted to touch on something that. All senses can be wrong. Uh, the way you choose to perceive the world, whether it's through, you know, um, whether you think a lot or whether you rely on feeling, we do what works for us most of the time, but these senses, these ways we perceive the world could be wrong. Even if you just rely on physically seeing or hearing, you know, just on the physical senses, you can misinterpret things. You can, you know, are not, we won't be accurate all the time. The same goes with our psychic abilities. Um, it, having increased psychic awareness, that can be really good. We can have that intuition, that awareness, but sometimes it's very difficult to discern the difference between psychically perceiving something versus projecting our, our fears or insecurities onto, onto our awareness or perception. Um, so that's something that I think can come up with Mercury sextiling, sextiling Pluto. We may be more aware, but the, th the things we are aware of are related to dangers, fears, tr you know, things that are difficult or troublesome. Um, so again, it can be difficult. We, we may be more paranoid, um, and there's this delusion that's brought on by Sun and Pisces, so we may be more paranoid or um, projecting but we may also be more psychically aware at the same time. So there's that, you know, good and bad or easy and challenging aspect of uh, aspect of this aspect, if that makes sense. Um, we also have Venus sextiling Chiron. Uh, Venus at 11 degrees Aquarius sextiling Chiron at 11 degrees Aries. And I approach aspects to Chiron and Aries with hesitation because to me it's almost like a time bomb a chiron which wants to explore personal wounds and traumas it wants to help those you know same traumas for others in order to heal ourselves doing this in in the context of aries which is very self-oriented and um very impulsive and sometimes reckless and and fiery i think is kind of precarious and can lead Sometimes it can lead to destruction. Sometimes we may want to have our voice heard and to, you know, explain our experience. But if we do so in a way that is too disruptive, it can lead to chaos. So I think that's a major theme with Chiron and Aries. Now, Venus and Aquarius means that we're wanting or desiring social cohesion. We're maybe a little bit idealistic right now. We're wanting to build, you know, a, a better future, a brighter future. Um, we have this kind of vision, and we may all have a different version of it, but each of us want to come together to create this world with the, one another. The difficulty comes in in the idealism, um, in the theoreticalness of it. Uh, we may all have an idea of how we want things to be, but if we actually work on going about achieving that, the outcome may be very different than what our original intent was. So combining Venus and Aquarius with Chiron and Aries, on the more auspicious 
side, I think this can be really great for communication, openness, transparency, especially between groups of people. So maybe companies, governments, um, you know, countries, between different demographics of people, um, different populations. I think this can be really great for mutual understanding. It, it can also, it can almost be therapeutic on a societal level, I think. Um, so I think that could be really beautiful. On the other hand, I think there can be an idealistic recklessness and a potential destruction, and especially with protests, I think there can be a really strong potential for um, protests. And again, you know, maybe the maybe s it's not all black and white. Maybe there's some level of destruction or chaos which is required in order to build understanding. Um, but where do you draw the line with that? It's easy to get out of hand when you combine Aquarius with Aries because these energies are so wild and um, experimental. So that's what I have to say about Venus in Aquarius, Sextile, and Chiron, and Aries. And as I'm delving into these energies, remember that this is all just Friday that we're talking about. Friday, which is the increased awareness and perception, the um, delusion and fear or pes uh, paranoia that's brought on by Sun and Pisces, Sextile, Pluto, and Capricorn. It's also the you know, the outcry of <laughs> different populations with Venus and Aquarius, Sextile and Chiron and Aries desiring to build a better future, but maybe going about it in a way that's chaotic or destructive. And lastly, we also have the full moon in Virgo. Um, this chart you can see by midday Eastern Standard Time, the moon has already passed. You know, it's already <laughs> out of the full moon opposition aspect. It's already in Libra. Um, so in Eastern Standard Time, it will happen earlier in the day. But we do have that full moon happening at 27 degrees Virgo. The only aspect that it really makes is to Pluto at 28 degrees Chiron. I'm just kidding, 20, 28 degrees Capricorn. Um, so it's interesting to me that Pluto it just made that sextile with the sun on pretty much on the same day. Well, yeah, on the same day. Um, but then Pluto also trines, it makes that trine with the full moon. So Pluto is at a really harmonious point. It's in agreement with this full moon aspect, even with the sun, it's supporting both the luminaries. So all together, you know, moon and Virgo, like I've talked about, is wanting us to integrate, pause, reflect, integrate in order to, mit to make room for the new, clear out the old to make room for the new. Pluto and Capricorn is desiring the same thing. It's just on a more global, societal, long-term level. Pluto and Capricorn is clearing out entire ways of being entire societal structures in order to make room for new um, moon and virgo is doing the same thing it's just on a much more personal short-term individualistic level but as above so below as above pluto and capricorn so below moon and virgo in this case um, so i think the common thread here which i feel like i've already outlined but just in case it's not clear <laughs> clearing away what is not ethical, what is not working, what is not efficient. Um, and again, in, in society as well as in our personal lives, clearing out the old to make room for the new. This is all about integration, making peace with our past and our present and um, you know, participating in the activities which allow us to build intuition. It's absolutely necessary at this time because we're about to enter a new level, a new plane. We're still in the fog, we're still dealing with this kind of dream state and um, pausing, reflecting, going into uncharted territory. But we will emerge from the fog in a relatively short amount of time. And so this is all just the preparation, the buildup, the making peace with what has happened already in order to move into that next stage. So that's really what's happening here. On a more mundane level, um, again, make sure you are pausing, resting, reflecting in order to maintain your health, physical, spiritual, mental, otherwise. Um, make sure you're maintaining your health in those ways. And I, I think this can be dis disruptive with other people. Um, you know, Virgo and Pisces are kind of wrapped up in their own minds and their own heads. And I think it can come off as neurotic or delusional like to to be totally honest on Friday, it, it seems like it would be a nightmare to me to 
have a lot of plans where you're maybe managing like a big event or something and you have to coordinate with many different people it it almost just seems impossible um so if you have to do that i'm sorry on the positive side there's a lot of creativity combining with uh, with um pisces and virgo because virgo is so detail oriented and pisces is so idealistic and imaginative that combining both of them a lot of um you know producers uh or you know people who make movies <laughs> um have energies with pisces and virgo michael jackson i think was sun and virgo moon and pisces or vice versa um so you know combining both of them allows you to create this whole new vision which is very powerful um it's just not always the best at coordinating with other people um, and a lot of that is that mercury is in detriment and falls still on pisces so dealing with a lot of detail nuance it's just not going to work right now um, things are foggy we're i don't know it's almost like we have glasses that don't really fit us right now we we just aren't able to see that level of detail right now um so really rest reflect and the intensity that's brought on by the full moon will quickly subside as the moon enters libra i think this is really beautiful because um, you know, the first part of this week, the first, you know, most of this week with the moon in Leo and then Virgo, we've been really uncompromising. We've been, you know, like I said at the beginning of the video, we've been wanting to work with others to build a, a better world. Um, but we're unwilling to compromise. And so ultimately we cannot do that. With the moon in Libra, it's a much more light and detached, easygoing focus, which I think is a lot more harmonious with the other energies at play here um most of the most of the focus is on pisces and aquarius right now and libra which is an air sign drives with aquarius you know being an air sign as well and pisces and, and libra together have a venus connection venus is exalted in pisces and then in domicile in libra so there's that shared theme of wanting to cooperate with others, being very empathetic, you know, able to put ourselves in other people's shoes. Um, so as the moon enters Libra, I think we can kind of take a, a deep breath and be much more relaxed and also much more willing to work with one another. Um, so I think that's really, really beautiful. It fits with our desire of social cohesion right now. Um, and also idealism, you know, wanting to build a kind of new world together um we're much more able to do that with moon and libra i think um yeah let's go forward to saturday march 19th uh okay so we have moon continues through libra as i've said that's really beautiful it, it works much better with the energies than i think leo or virgo did um and also Le moon and libra is a really I think a generally, you know, very um, pleasant, easy to experience energy um, because we maybe kind of reflect more before acting. So it's more peaceful and we can be more diplomatic generally. So that's um, generally good. You know, Libra's ruled by benefic and all that. So generally auspicious, uh, relatively pleasant, I would say. Also, the moon is still full, so we still have that a little bit of intensity, but it's beginning to taper down and unwind now. So that's I think that's generally good. There's so much happening right now that I think, um, you know, especially with Mercury and Pisces, where it's in detriment and fall, we can become overwhelmed very easily right now. So as the moon tapers down and it's in this kind of mellow sign of Libra, I think that's really nice for us. We can get um, a little bit of a break from that heightened intensity. On Saturday, we also have Venus at 12 degrees Aquarius, making a, a square aspect to Uranus at 12 degrees Taurus. Um, this is interesting because so it's a square aspect that's a square is typically chaotic it's um it, there's not harmony there because the, the plants are in disagreement they're at odds with one another there's a conflict there and that conflict creates stress and the stress motivates us to change so you know on the challenging side squares are challenging stressful um uncomfortable we can be anxious with the squares or depressed, stressed. The silver lining is that there are excellent times to make change, improvements, um, changes. So there, so this is a you know not the most harmonious aspect. However, this is more harmonious than a typical square aspect because Venus and Uranus are in mutual reception, 
What that means is um, Uranus is in Taurus, which is ruled by Venus. Venus is in Aquarius, which is ruled by Uranus. Um, so although both are squaring one another, they have that mutual understanding because both are in energies that are conducive to the other, if that makes sense. Um, so on a more mundane level, the way we I would expect to experience this would be Venus in Aquarius. So Venus, Venus in Aquarius means our desire... Our desire, attraction, abundance is involved with group activities, online activities, technology, um, things of that nature. Um, Aquarius is groups. It's also internet, um, so like social media. So there could be so something triggered by our desire and attraction and our, our abundance in those areas that makes a dramatic change to commodities, to the economy, to values, um, what supports us financially, physically, um, represented by Uranus and Taurus. Um, so there could be some type of event that originates from online activities or group activities that changes our economic circumstances. On a more personal level, um, this can be changes to what we desire individually. So what do you desire? What are you attracted to? What do you value? Um, what do you value with yourself, with other people, with, I don't know, what, what's your version of abundance right now? And with Aquarius, a lot of this is non-physical. Um, so what do you desire socially? What do you desire with your future? Um, there could be sudden shifts with things of that nature. And also that applies to our commitments as well. Venus um, ruling desire can be financial. It can also be our social relationships. Um, especially being Venus and Aquarius. So what do you desire with groups you affiliate yourself with or relationships that you have? Um, your priorities may change with this aspect here. And this also, you know, being Uranus, like I talked about before, um, this can relate to shifts in consciousness. So maybe you have a shift in perception or in awareness, which leads to, leads to a change in what you value or desire. Things of that nature can happen on Saturday. Moving forward to Sunday, March 20th, um, we have both the luminaries shifting signs today. So sun entering, sun leaving Pisces, entering Aries, moon leaving Libra, entering Scorpio. And as I mentioned before, Libra and Pisces to me are more Venusian energies. They're more yin oriented. Now, yes, Libra is a yang sign being an air sign, but it's ruled by Venus, which is a benefic uh, Venus is more feminine, more yin-oriented, uh, meaning that it's more focused on other people, focused on empathy, it's more diplomatic, it's more adaptable, go with the flow, um, more internal. So that energy, which is kind of shared between Pisces and Libra, is now shifting to Aries and Scorpio, which is much more masculine, yang-oriented, more fiery, more ambitious, more individualistic, more focused on self-expression rather than cooperation with others. So it's a big shift. Um, this can be, um, it can be disruptive. Um, Aries and Scorpio initiate, they, they begin things. So, and they begin what, you know, again, it's personal, it's individualistic. So that can be disruptive. Um, they're great for disrupting the status quo. They could be a little bit rebellious or provocative. Um, but more than that, this is the spring equinox. This is, this is the one, well, one of two days of the year where the entire world has 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of darkness, which is very powerful because for one, there's a level of equality of unification there. We, the whole world is unified on the same page where with the 12 hours of light, 12 hours of darkness, there's equality, balance, unification there very powerful. Um, the other reason why this is powerful is because it's a major transition point. We transition from winter to spring in the northern hemisphere. We transition from winter, which in winter we're ha experiencing increased daylight each day, but there's less daylight than darkness. Now in spring, there's, for every day in spring, there's increasing daylight each day, and there's also more daylight than there is darkness. That's why this is such a potent time for the sun um, all through spring, especially in Aries, the first, um, first sign of spring. 
Um, that's why the sun is exalted in Aries. So this is a very powerful time. There's a lot of abundant energy. And we are stepping out of the fog. I don't think we're completely out of the fog yet with Mercury in Pisces. Mercury still needs to cross over Jupiter and Neptune um, before it enters Pisces. So there's still a lot of fog we have to wade through, but sun entering Aries is starting to break through the fog. Um, and I think it's almost perfect that this, the moon has just entered Scorpio because Scorpio is almost like a mediating, it's almost the perfect mediator between Pisces and Aries. Scorpio is water like Pisces, but it's ruled by Mars like Aries. Um, so it's almost like a halfway point, even though it's on the other side of the, the zodiac. Um, so, so yeah, we we're on this. We're stepping out of the fog. We're approaching the end of this lack of clarity and this illusion. Um, and on the one hand, that can be a breath of fresh air, can gain a little bit of clarity. On the other hand, combining Aries energies with Pisces energies is extremely dysfunctional. Um, there can be a lot of accidents happening. And the reason being is you're combining the initiation, the spontaneity, the impulsiveness of Aries with the dreaminess, confusion, fog of Pisces. Um, so it's, I don't know, it, it, that can be reckless. It can be very uh, destructive at times, but it's, it can also be very creative at the same time. Um, and really the only activities I can think of, you know, with combining the Aries, Sc Pisces, and Scorpio energies, the only activities I can think of that would be really safe and really positive and beneficial, auspicious, utilizing these energies would be either very artistic, very creative, you know, painting, or I don't think writing, it wouldn't be intellectual so much. It would be more uh, like performing, you know, like dance or singing or music. Um, or something artistic or painting or something. Any type of uh, expression through art, I think, would be especially benefited by these energies right now. The other manifestation of this, I think, could be physical activity. So, you know, physical, like uh, physical fighting or movement or running, you know, working out. Um, that would satisfy both the desire to be physical, physically active of sun and Aries, but also that, you know, dream state of the water signs, um, if that makes sense. In most other activities, I think it, it's dis dis dysfunctional or potentially chaotic combining the two, but those are the only two areas I can think of that are, I don't know, safe, for lack of a better word. Um, but yeah, this is, it is dysfunctional. Oh, and the other thing I would compare it to is it's almost like we're waking up from the dream. As the sun enters Aries, we wake up from the heavy dream state, but we're still groggy. Um, and it's almost like we wake up sprinting and that's where you can run into a wall. You can knock things over, um, but at least we're awake and we're starting to wake up from the dream. We're starting, you know, we're, we're still, you know, when you wake up from a dream, you can still remember the dream. You're still partially in it, but you're waking up. We're gaining clarity, and that's what I have for this week. Next week, um, you know, we're gaining clarity. Sun enters Aries. That's a big part of it. Mercury will be very busy next week. It will cross over Jupiter, Neptune, and it will enter Aries. And once Mercury enters Aries, then we're out of the fog. We can think much more clearly. Mercury is happy in Aries. I would say it's in joy in Aries. It's in joy in the first house, which corresponds to Aries. Um, so finally, we can have some fun in our thinking. We can be much more active, much more vocal, much more decisive, um, and, and really begin things in a much more physical way. Um, also next week, we'll have a third quarter, moon, third quarter moon in Capricorn, so stay tuned for that. And I hope this helps you. I know this was a bit rambly. This was dysfunctional. It was chaotic. I am tempted to blame Mercury and Pisces for that. I think it's a part of it. But, um, but really, I hope this helps you. And even, <laughs> I almost think it's kind of like a weather forecast. Like, let's say you watch a forecast and it's saying that there's a storm coming. Ideally, you can use that information to prepare for the storm, maybe change your plans or your habits. But even if you don't make any physical change, you at least are maybe comforted the fact you're, you're not so shocked or taken aback by the storm 
because you at least know it's coming. So it doesn't surprise you. It doesn't catch you, you know, so mentally unprepared. And so I hope these forecasts are like that. You know, at the very least, I hope they give you a sense of comfort in knowing that everything at least makes sort of sense on some level and that it's not all random, it's not all chaotic, and it won't take you, you know, completely aback or completely, um, you know, sh you won't be in complete shock from what's happening. I know what me, myself, watching forecasts like that, um, I would gain that, that feeling. So I hope at the very least I can create that for you. Um, but thank you for watching. I hope you're well. I, I know this has been hard for us, but I think we are about to move into something much bigger, much better. And of course, that looks different for each and every one of us. Our journeys are all unique. However, I think all of us in our own way, we are ready to move on to a new level of sorts. And that, that is very exciting. It's something we can't see yet since we're still currently in the fog, but we're almost out of it. So, um, so hang in there. We will, we will move on to more clear things, more bigger and brighter things. Um, so yeah, that's really what I have to say for this week. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.